Book of Psalms 103, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Book of Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. The title message is from verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Book of Psalms, Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Dr. Walker, would you please pray for the message? Well, I pray for my brother. Amen. Amen. Blessing. Amen. Clear his mind and Lord, take what he's prepared and use it for your glory and honor. We pray the Holy Spirit of God would have liberty and the Word of God would not return back void. That you bless the preaching and teaching of the Scriptures. That you might feed us with the Word of God today. Bless your preacher and use him. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And. Psalm 103 is famous, and it's a psalm about mercy. And it shows the quality of mercy, measure of mercy, extent of mercy, and the duration of mercy. And it has the same number of verses as the Hebrew alphabet, if you ever studied it. And bless occurs seven times in this chapter. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, as you're living your Christian life, you know, how do you bless the Lord? I mean, do you even bless the Lord for any situation that you're in? You have to be cleansed by the Word of God on a daily basis. You know, you got to keep the fire going. Feed the fire. And as we had mountaintop experience in the past week, there are some warnings, you know, that you and I have to heed. And I got this from, you know, Brother Knowles. You know, Brother Knowles, you know, one of the great preachers out there. And if you haven't had a chance to, you know, watch Brother Knowles, you know, Dennis Knowles, you should check it out. And especially for you guys, his sermons are pretty short. But that's what people could handle, right? Like 20 minutes, some 15, 30. And he had a revival back in April. And I thought, man, I was like, as I was preparing, you know, what is a, what would be a very applicable message? And one of the warning signs is that, you know, in order for you to bless the Lord, you know, you can't be tired, right? Tiredness brings vulnerability. When you're tired, you cannot make, you know, sound decisions. That's why you have to make sure that you're not tired physically, and you're not tired spiritually. If you are tired either way, there's unbalance in your life. When you're unbalanced, you cannot serve the Lord like you should. When you're unbalanced, devil has better chance of defeating you. When you're unbalanced, you know, you don't think about glorifying God. You don't think about, you know, exalting God. You don't think about, you know, giving thanks to God. You know, you're so consumed with your own affairs and your feelings and your emotions and your physical weakness that God is always becoming the secondary. I know what, has, what happened for some people right after that mountaintop experience, you have gone down, right? You know, you were blessing the Lord the whole time at the camp, you know, praising him. You're fed with the, you know, word of God, you know, constantly you have a, you know, divine, you know, fellowship, you know, with your brethren. Everything was good. But you got down on that Friday, and I know for sure that devil started attacking you. you know, blessing the Lord wasn't on your top of your mind, right? You were already thinking about you know, things of the world. You are already thinking about things of your flesh. How can you bless the Lord you know, if you don't have him in your heart as number one priority constantly? How can you bless the Lord if you don't count your blessings on a daily basis? I mean, how can you bless the Lord if you're not close to the Lord? 
I mean, how can you bless the Lord you know, if you don't care about the Word of God? How can you bless the Lord if you don't care about your physical body? You know, temple of God, your body is the temple of God, right? Then you have to take care of it. You know, if because of your laziness, because of your you know, lack of care for your physical body, that you cannot you know, serve God or participate in the ministry, then it's your fault. I mean, it's, it's your fault. It's not my fault. It's not God's fault. Right. It's your own fault. Yes. That's why, as a Bible believers, you do have to take care of your body. Amen. I mean, there's no excuse, right? Yes. You bless the Lord for everything, but when it comes to your eating habits, you know, you might not bless the Lord yes. uh -oh. because, you know, you, you're, you're weak. Yes. You know, I mean, a lot of preachers are weak too. You know, when it comes to, you know, good southern, you know, home fried food, how can you say no? I mean, who doesn't like fried chicken here? I mean, Korean chicken is very famous, right? You know, people love, you know, fried chicken, you know, fried anything. Yes. If you go to a carnival or, you know, fair, what do they serve? Fried Twinkies, you know, fried Oreos, you know, everything's fried. However, if you don't think about, you know, your body as a temple of God, you know, you're going to ruin it. Then all these things that happened to you, all the blessings that you received at the camp, you know, because of your tiredness, you're going to lose it. Because when you're tired, you know, it's very, very easy to make the wrong decision. You know, when apostles, you know, were waiting for the Lord, you know, I mean, they got tired. I mean, they just got tired. And then they give in. When you're tired, you're going to give in. Right? You cannot, you know, bless the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul when you are tired state. You know, it's not, I'm not saying that, you know, you should get like 30 hours of sleep, you know, and in a day, you know, you sleep all day and then you're like, oh, yeah, now I feel good. No, you know, you got to have a right amount of rest and you got to have a balanced, you know, schedule in your life. Amen. When you're tired then what comes after tiredness? You got to be tried. The devil's waiting for you to be tired, and the devil wants to try you. Yes. Well, you're already tried already. I mean, yesterday was Saturday. I mean, were you living like how you were on Friday, Monday oh, through Friday? No. I mean, what happened, right? What happened to you, tired. right? I mean, I'm pretty sure some of you slept like five hours, right? Yes. You took a five-hour nap, right? Yes. You know, I mean, you probably are just under, you know, a little bit of weather. But it's not only that. Then you get tempted. You know, the devil doesn't stop there. You know, the devil looks at that, oh, okay, okay, let's make that person tired. And then he's going to try you, and then you're tempted. You know, when that temptation comes, you know, Brother Knowles put it this way. You know, the devil wants to steal, world wants to chill it, and flesh wants to kill you. Simple as that. Steal chill and kill all the joy that you had all the decisions that you made right you know through dr walker's preaching and you know our pastor's preaching you know pastor stevenson you know pastor Korsky and pastor kim and you made big decisions and then you are resolved to do it and you know you're fired up to do it and that there's the fire going on inside of you and before fire could go out, per brother knows, right? It's quenched. I mean, it's burning. Yes. But, you know, when you start a campfire, it starts. But you have to let it spread. You have to let it, you know, go out in order for it to continue. Yes. But a lot of times what happens if the, you know, there's too much humidity, if it's too wet, right? Yes. Fire starts for just a little bit and then it disappears. Nice. Majority of the Christians, unfortunately, after such an experience, mountaintop experience, their fire goes out very, very quickly. Because you don't let it you know, continuously burn, you don't let it go out. You don't let it you know, burn the, uh, the uh, other parts of the wood, right? You just let it burn that tiny part, and then because you don't keep track of it, you know, if, when we are having campfire testimony, someone has to feed the fire. Yes. Right. But if you don't do it, then it's going to go out, burn out. 
But for many of you, you know, your fire wasn't big from the start. Your fire was like, you know, a little tiny fire. You know, you just brought some tinder and you just started. And you really needed to, you know, blow the air. You needed to make sure that, you know, the fire starts really well. But what happened? Man, you neglected it right away. Can you believe it? I mean, Friday night maybe was tiring day, so you come, I mean, you rested, right? But Saturday was a different day, whole new day, right? I mean, if you look at your life, I mean, did you really bless the Lord throughout the whole day yesterday? Or were you just more concerned about, you know, affairs of this world? Right? If devil has already stolen that away from you, that big decision that you made at the you know, summer camp, then you've already lost. You've already gave yourself to the devil, right? And then world will try to chill it. Yes, that's right. It's like world's like, okay, you know, you're fired up. It's okay. Let's just keep it a little bit lower. Let's keep it down, right? Hey, fire's too hot, and I can't handle it. You know? And the world's like, I can't handle your fire. You know? Let's, let's try to deem it a little bit. You know, just, I'll, let you, I'll let you, you know, let the fire go just a little bit. Just that we could just look at it, right? Just that you could kind of feel it. But what happens, right? Now your flesh comes in. Flesh goes, you know what? It's time for me to do my job. I'm going to kill it. I mean, and then flesh goes, okay, devil did his job. World did his job. Now it's time for me to just quench it once and for all. Man, then your flesh takes over. All the big decisions that you made, it's like flesh goes, no, no, right? It's time for me to put that fire out. I want you to be the same as you were before the camp, even worse than the camp. Yeah. All the decisions that you made is for naught. You know, you're nothing, right? You're just uh, flesh. You're just you're full of your old nature, your carnal Christian. You know, you're just going to stay the way you are. Yes. Just wait until next camp, right? Oh, I mean, it's going to start telling you. Your flesh is like, okay, you try. You can't go on, you know. Bless the Lord, oh, my son. No, no, it's, that's not for you. you know, your, 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 your way of thinking should be, you know, pity you, you know, so-and-so. And then you start having self-pity. You start having, you know, this sorry for yourself situation. Oh. Lord, I was at the camp. I thought you would bless me. And Lord did bless you. And Lord has given you so many things and so much things, you know, spiritual blessings. And then you're like, oh, Lord, I'm already thinking about my job, my family, my relationship, my financial situations, and everything. And you let the flesh kill everything that you gain at the summer camp. Or any other experience, right? Any other Bible-believing conferences, jubilees, or whatnot. Then what happens? Then you are not going to be glorifying God for everything. And there's reason why, as Christians, your fire's always quenched. There's reason why your fire is not keep on burning. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans. Book of Romans. So it's a daily thing. It's a daily battle. And it, you have to feed the fire on a daily basis. And you have to glorify, exalt, and bless the Lord every time, every second. But Romans 121 tells us some things that you and I have to be aware of. Romans 121. The Bible says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And then as you do the rest of the verses under 32, you see the result of, you know, Gentiles, you know, apostasy, and all the sins that they commit. You know, those are unsaved people. But, you know, spiritually, you know, speaking, you know, if we apply it devotionally, that's Christian state. If you don't glorify God, and if you're not thankful, you know what's going to happen to you? Your imagination will be darkened, right? And your foolish heart is darkened. Then what happens? That's why as Christians, you commit all these sins that you thought you won't be able to commit or you thought, you know, I'm not capable of committing. It's the same. Because your mind is darkened, you're going to do every, all of this. Think about it. 
you know, who changed the truth of God into a, you know, lie, you know. And then there's, of course, you know, all those without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, you know, and you name it. All of this happens when you don't bless the Lord. I mean, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, you know, all his benefits. What is that saying, right? For every, every part of your life, you cannot forget God's hand in your life. Every part of your life. Amen. I mean, think about it. If you are truly, you know, blessing the Lord for your camp experience, you don't fall so easily. You don't let the fire, you know, quench so easily. If you were so thankful, if you gave glory to God, you exalted him, and you're like, wow, Lord, I'm so blessed by your benefits during that time. And what, what happens when you think about benefits? It constantly stays on your mind, yes. right? If you don't let things of God rule your mind, what happens? You know, vain imagination and darkened, you know, mind and darkened heart will rule your heart yes. and rule your That's mind. Good. That's why many of the Christians don't have joy in their life. That's right. If you were to bless the Lord, oh my soul, how can you not be joyful even if you're going through a hard time, trials, you know, whatever it may be? However, when you're not, you know, blessing the Lord, what happens? It's either way. You know, Christian walk is very simple. Either you're darkened with, you know, wicked imaginations, or you are, you know, brightened with things of God. That's then you have to examine your heart. Amen. Let's go back to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Amen. That's why you, know, you have to read your Bible. You have to meditate in the Word of God. Yes. And you have to think about it, you know, how I can apply in my life. You know, don't just stop there. If you make decision, you know, don't be hearers only. you got to be doers yes. as well. You know, when I was reviewing some of the camp notes, you know, it reminded me, right? That's one of the things that Dr. Walker preached, right? It reminds me because I was, you know, reviewing it. Why do you guys take notes in the first place? Because you're going to get lectured by someone if you don't take notes. You take notes so that you could retain information better and yes. so that you could go back to it later. I mean, how many of you guys actually have gone to, you know, summer camp or preaching notes before? Maybe some, but many don't. Then how do you expect to be blessed by message, that message, over and over and over? You know, it will give you, those few words will remind you. Yes. I, mean, I, wrote, I wrote it down right here. You got to feed the fire. You got to stir it up Amen. or you're stagnant. Right. That's good. I mean, Dr. Walker said, I mean, you, 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 you saw the illustration of the pond with, you know, all those like green yes. algae looks like grass, right? Yes. I mean, us Californians probably would just try to run over there and just <laughs> fall into the pond, right? You know, and probably face some gator, you know, <laughs> underneath, you know? But you have to stir it up. You got to let it flow. Amen. And the fire, if you don't give air to it, what happens? It dies. Yes. I mean, if you want to keep that fire going, you got to breathe some life into it with the Word of God, yes, you know, amen. with some great preachings, right? Yes. And then we also you have to pray, right? And yes. prayer is very, very important. It's all essential, you know, part of glorifying God. So when we go back to Psalms 103, you know, number one thing, you know, you know, one of the benefits that, right, He has forgiven all thine iniquities, you know. Amen. I mean, if you, you know, apply it to it right now, you know, devotionally, think about it. Lord Jesus Christ has taken away all your iniquity. I mean, he died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, not for today and not for yesterday, forever, tomorrow too. I mean, his blood cleans us from all sins. I mean, washes away all of our sins once and for all. 
no matter what happens, if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Amen. your sins are gone. Amen. Amen. You can't bring, you could bring it up all you want, but when Lord looks at me and when Lord looks at you, you're white as snow. Yes. I mean, it's not the greatest thing ever. What sins are you talking about? I know. I mean. I mean, we learned a great, great hymn during the camp. You know, yeah. what sins are you talking about, yeah. right? I mean, that's the answer. You know, accuser will come to you, right? Hey, man, you've been looking at some wicked stuff on your phone. You're, you know, at home. You know, you've been talking wicked stuff. You've had some bad relationships, man. You say you'll never lie, but you're still lying, right? You say you never cheat, you're still cheating. Yes. You know, all that, you know, failures of, Human being, all the sins that you do. But the Lord said, what? What sin are you talking about? Amen. Man, to the accuser, what sin are you talking about? Right. I mean, to all these devils, right? all these wicked people, even your flesh, right? even the world, yes. you know, what sin are you talking about? He's washed in my blood once and for all, Amen. and then I don't see any sin. Right? Yeah. Right? That's why you, know, you got to bless the Lord. Why? Because... Your sins are forgiven once and for all. If you trusted him as your Lord and Savior, I mean, I, I don't know about you. I mean, that's the greatest benefit. Yes. Amen. That is where I don't have to worry about my sins anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. You still have physical body, right? So you'll still commit sin. That's why we have, you know, 1 John 1, 9. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? But if you get into the book and if you know some of the doctrine, just simple body, soul, and spirit, right? Because of spiritual circumcision, your body and soul separated once and for all. I mean, that's why, you know, my body could go out. God forbid, okay? Don't go out there and just say that, you know, Pastor Jay's going to do this, right? But God forbid that, you know, I go out there and rob a bank, right? You know? And then, you know, I kill someone, I still won't go to hell. Amen. Yeah, because my soul yeah. is white as snow for all eternity. Amen. Don't you want that? Yes. Right? And if you aren't saved, you know, if you're here and listening, don't you want that precious salvation? Yes. Don't you want that eternal security? Amen. Man, a lot of people before they die, they say a couple things, right? I regret Spending more time, not spending more time with my loved ones. They always say it, you know. And then secondly, you know, I have regret because I don't know where I'm going, right? Because they don't even, you know, express it like that. They're just scared to die, right? If you were to die right now, I mean, do you know for sure you go to heaven? I mean, if you're not, that's the most terrible place that you can be in as a human being. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen five minutes from now. If somehow the Lord says, it's your time to go, and if you don't know where you're going, most likely where are you going to end up? I mean, most likely you're going to end up in hell, burning, right? But you have this opportunity. Lord's keep on giving you second, third, fourth chances to, you know what, realize that you're a sinner on your way to hell that I die for your sins, you just have to trust me as your Lord and Savior, and you have Amen. eternal life. Simple as that. Simple. You know, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and then not of your save. It is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast, you know, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Then when Lord's giving you that gift of salvation, you should just receive it. When someone gives you a gift, a lot of times you receive it. Yes. Right. Being thankful, right? But if someone were to give you a billion dollars, Who's going to say no? If someone were to say, no strings attached, right. no strings attached, yes. here's a billion dollars for you. Oh, you know what? Even better. Is Elon Musk the richest guy on earth? I don't know how much he's worth. Say he's worth like 100 billion, right? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to give you a dollar more than Elon Musk, right? And oh. it's, it's free. And, they, you know, do you want it? Who in the right mind is going to say no, you know? I mean, cuckoos will be saying, oh, I don't need it. You know, I don't want that much money. Just give me half of it. You know, do some, you know, illogical yeah, right. reasoning. But if someone were to give it to you, you're going to be like, oh, thank you so much. It's going to change my life for the better. And then you just receive it. Yes. But when Lord says, which is a lot more than billion, trillion, and gazillion dollars of worth, said this is free salvation. You don't have to burn in hell for eternity, yes. right? You'll be with me. Amen. 
forever, right? In heaven. Why would you say no? But us, as saved Christians, that's something that we can bless the Lord for. We can say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Why? Because all my iniquities, all my sins, all my dirt, all my dirty stuff, pollution, everything, dirty mind, you know, wicked mind, you know, it's all taken away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why you can't bless the Lord, oh my soul. I mean, first thing, you know, I, when I wake up, you know, I could just say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, because my sins are gone once and for all. If you start your day like that, how can you not be joyful? I mean, whatever comes into your life, you know, whether it be trials, you know, whether it be sadness, whether it be obstacles, hindrances, you know, anything that comes in your way, for that one fact that my sins are gone once and for all. What sin are you talking about? How can you not bless the Lord? How can you not say, praise God? You know, I mean, even if like someone was like cussing at you, you know, praise the Lord. You know, I'm not going to hell. I mean, if someone's like cussing at you, you know, you blah, blah, blah. Hey, bless the Lord, right? You know, what sin are you talking about? I mean, now we have a great phrase that we could reply to anybody. Say if we are, you know, street preaching or we're doing visitation, you know, when you're witnessing to someone and they get angry and they come back to you, you know, when you're saying that, you know, if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and they're like, you know, you're going to do blah, 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 blah. And then all, all I'm going to say is, you know, what sin are you talking about? You know, I mean, what sin are you talking about? I mean, they'll be dumbfounded, right? right? I think they won't have any, you know, right answers for that yeah. one or logical answers, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? What sin are you talking about? And I'm going to bless the Lord. Why? Because my sins Amen. are forgiven, past, present, future. Yeah. It's gone once and for all. Man, with that conviction, you know, with that assurance, how can you not bless the Lord? Right. I mean, just that alone should give you a happy day, right? Yes. You know? Yeah. No, blessings are happiness, right? Yes. You could be happy because of the Lord's blessings. Amen. You could bless the Lord because you're happy, right? You know, yeah, you sing it. Yeah, amen. I mean, I mean, you could just bless the Lord. I mean, we could park here for a little bit. Like, I have other points, but like, hey, come on, you know. If you're going through anything in your life, right, you can still bless the Lord. Because your sins are washed away once and for all, right? You had a fight with your spouse, you could still bless the Lord. Your yeah. sins are washed away. You had a fight with your mommy and daddy, you could still bless the Lord, yeah. right? You had a fight with your children, you could still bless the Lord, right? You had a fight with your boss, you could still bless the Lord. You, could have, you had a fight with your direct report, you could still bless the Lord. Man, world's going down, you know, all this politics, economies, you know, inflation and everything. You could still bless the Lord. Number one thing, why? Because your sins are washed away by blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. Man, think about it. Because of that, whatever worry that you've had all this time, right? Whether it's, uh, mention that again, a lot of times it's financial relationship health issues, right? You don't have to worry about it. You could just bless the Lord for it. Because you're washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all, where are you going to end up? Man, you're going to have a new body, yes. right? Thank you, Lord. When the trumpet sounds, right, yes. you know, you're going to be up there with the Lord, yes. you know, with the mind and body of Christ. Man, Man think about it. Yes. Wow. I mean, how can you not sing? How can you not smile? How can you not bless the Lord? Yes. When you think that one day I'm going to have a mind like Christ you know, at the camp. People love to flock around Dr. Walker, right? <laughs> I mean, no offense to Dr. Kim, you know. I mean, he's good too, you know. <laughs> but, you know, Dr. Kim, uh, Dr. Walker has more experience, you know. Experience always plays a role, right? Yes. You know. And, you know, Brother Stevenson's there, Brother Gorski's there. Yeah. You know? Brother Rob's always there. I mean, he goes to everybody, right? With Brother Daniel. And then you start talking about this, you know, deeper doctrines, right? And then, you know, as you get more revelation through the man that God gave more revelation to. I mean, you start listening and hearing, and you start understanding. And as they were talking about, you know, revelation, you know, all those deep doctrines, man, you get more excited. Amen. Like, wow, Lord, you know. One day, when we leave this place, right, and get the new body, and then you get the mind of Christ, yeah. everything that you ever 
had questions about, it will open up and you'll understand. Yes. I mean, can you imagine? Every verse in the Word of God, yeah. right? Genesis 1, 1, 2, you know, Revelation 22, 21, you, you know everything. Amen. I mean, everything. I mean, all these tough questions that they asked Lord Jesus Christ, you have the same mind to answer. Uh, I mean, uh, what is that black hole for, Lord? You know, what is all this verse talking about, right? You know, double, triple, you know, tribulation or rapture, you know? All the, like you're asking, you know, about the aliens, right? You know, sons of God, you know, everything. And like, you're going to have it because your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you're saved, because you have become child of God. And you're going to, you know, receive that perfect body. And you're going to know more than that. You know, you're going to spend eternity with the Lord, right? But, I mean, besides from that, that's why you and I can bless the Lord. Yeah. Oh, my soul. Why? Because our sins are gone. Lord has forgiven all of our sins. And then secondly, let's go to continue to verse 3. Who healeth all thy diseases? Right? I know a lot of people are going through you know, a lot of physical illness, right? And then you'll be, you know, if you don't know anything if you think that everybody's in good health, right? Both mentally and physically. Right. People are going through things, right? But the thing that you and I need to do is just take it to the Lord in prayer, right? You know, we're not going to this apostolic, charismatic church, you know, you know, where someone's going to put a hand on your head and just punch it, you know, yeah. you know and then kick you for it. And then suddenly, you know, your, your illness just suddenly disappear, you know. I mean, sometimes, you know, devil works in those ways too. So yeah. it does happen. But that's not God's way, right? right? You can't bless the Lord. Why? Because the Lord's going to take care of your health Amen. no matter what. I mean, that's one of the hardest things that a Christian has to go through is physical illness, right? I know you've known some people in your life, maybe even you, who's going through many of the physical, you know, ailments. You know, my wife's going through it, right? So I haven't gone through it personally, but seeing her, I see how difficult it is to bless the Lord when your body's not acting like how you want it to be. But you still can. Why? Because Lord healeth all thy diseases. Amen. I mean, Lord says he's going to do it, right? Yes. Maybe, maybe it's not here now. But you know what? Eventually, Amen. it's going to be gone. Woo! I mean, can't you, uh, when you compare that to people who's terminally ill and who's not saved, who's lying on the bed, whether it be, you know, little children, right, in children's hospital, or whether it be just regular, you know, adult hospital where they're dying of, you know, cancers, right, stage four cancers or whatnot, they cannot bless the Lord because they're not saved and they don't know where they're going and they know. I don't know if they're going to receive a perfect body or not, right. but you can, Amen. right? Yes. You can. Yes. Why? You are going to one day ever, ever, you never have to worry about those diseases. You never have to worry about health issues. I mean, it's not the greatest thing. Yes. I mean, I could bless the Lord on my soul because one day I'm going to have that perfect body. Amen. One day I don't have to worry about, you know, coughing on someone. Like nowadays, you know, I, have, I don't have to worry about, you know, coughing and people looking at you strangely yeah. this day and age, right? Because you're going to have a perfect body. And you're going to know for sure that Lord will heal your diseases. Simple as that. Thank you, That's how you take it to the Lord in prayer. Yes. And of course, but if you could do anything else, do your best, right? Yes. Yeah. If you pray first and if you have to get checked up, go, go get checked up. Yes. Pray to God that, you know, God will give wisdom to the doctors, right? You, know, you don't want to be that people, right? You know, yeah, I pray, you know, even though I need the surgery, it's okay. You know, you know, you know, my... Well, you know, I broke my bones, you know, or I feel like, you know, my heart's really messed up. I'm just going to pray to God, you know. But Lord has given you many warnings, right? Hey, you know, there's a good doctor. Someone comes up to you and, hey, there's a great doctor, right? And then he's like an expert, you know. He's like rank number one. And then, you know, go get checked out by him. Your answer shouldn't be like, no, it's okay. I pray to God. Everything's all right, you know. And then Lord, Lord saying, you know, uses like your family. Hey, you know, so-and-so told me about this doctor, you know. Hey, go, go check it out. Like, no, 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 it's okay, you know. The Lord's going to take care of me, right? 
And then finally, like, you know, your spouse goes, hey, you're about to die, you know? Well, why don't you go get it checked up? You know, I, I plead with you, you know? No, 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 it's okay, Lord, it's gonna take care of you. And then you die. Yeah. And then you go to the Lord and, Lord, you know, why did I die, Lord? I thought, you know, you're gonna heal me and stuff, you know? I'm like, I gave you three chances. Yeah. And then you reject it all, yeah. right? So you can't be foolish, you know? Do your part, do your best. But you gotta leave it on the Lord. And then you could still always bless the Lord. You know, scientifically speaking, when people have a more positive, optimistic outlook, they get healed better, right? When they are depressed, they have no hope, a lot of those people, you know, their health get worse and they just die, right? When you are blessing the Lord, wherever state you are at, I know for one thing, you're not going to get worse. Literally, but it will especially give you strength, right? But as Christians, as a Bible-believing Christians, man, you shouldn't be down in the gutter. You shouldn't be Debbie Downer. Amen. And you shouldn't be like someone who looks like you have no hope. Right. You should be the one with all the hope in the world. Yes. You should be the one with the biggest smile, Amen. right? You should be the one with the biggest joy and happiness because you can still say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, Amen. and forget not all his benefits. Why? Who healeth all my diseases? Yes. I, mean, I mean, Lord said it, right? I mean, he's going to eventually. Right. Then you could have that conviction and assurance. That's why, you know, when you know for sure that you're the child of God, yes. when you have that assurance of salvation, and there are so many blessings. If you're not, you're missing out. Obviously, you're going to miss out in eternity, but even this everyday life, you could have that assurance. And then continuously, you know, let's go to verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You can't bless the Lord because of his mercy and loving kindness. Amen. I mean, you and I could go through each day, you know, our physical day. Because of his mercy. I mean, thank God for his mercy. I mean, every day, you and I, you know, we've done some stuff, man. If the Lord were to just judge us on the spot, you know, we'll be dead. But I can't bless the Lord for your mercy. I mean, mean, each day, I mean, you know, me, number one, man, I commit sin that I know I shouldn't. I mean, thank God for his mercy. Because if he did not have mercy, if he's not the merciful God, what do you think is going to happen? Even after the camp, the things that, you know, I thought I wasn't going to do, you know, you do it already. Even after all those big decisions. But God has given you and I his mercy. I mean, because of his mercy, our life can continue. Can you believe that? That's why I could bless my, you know, bless the Lord my soul. Why? Because of his mercy, I can face another day. I mean, think about it. Because of his mercy, because he's preserving my life with his mercy. I mean, if he he wasn't merciful, you know, I mean, Bible says, right? You know, if we live after the flesh, he shall die. I mean, if you're still constantly living in your sinful state, Lord might one day just say, come home. You know, I'd rather have you, you know, home. But Lord has given you, because of his mercy, many, many chances. Right. Second, third, fourth, and hundreds of chances, yes. right? Then how can you not bless the Lord for his mercy? You know, some people are afraid of death, right? Many people are afraid of death. Only reason you're still alive is because of the Lord's mercy. And if you're not saved, you're still alive because of the Lord's mercy. Amen. Then, as saved or unsaved person, you can't bless the Lord because my life is continuing where I have more opportunities, yeah. another opportunities, you know, another blessing to serve God Amen. for another day. I mean, you've had, you know, a lot of people, you know, I mean, think about it. Well, that illustration really got to me, right? When Dr. Walker talked about a man, you know, like, he wasted many years, right? But he's back now. Amen. He's serving, you know, in, the, in, in his church. Praise the Lord for that. Yes. But those years, he can't get it back. 
You know, it brings hurt and tears, right? But even that brother can bless the Lord because of his mercy. Amen. You and I can bless the Lord. Whatever you went through, right? There may be a lot of hurt. There may be a lot of tears. There may be a lot of broken hearts, right? But you can still bless the Lord because throughout it all, you're still here and God has given you opportunity. God has blessed you. God has given you privilege yes. to face another day Thank you, Lord. because of his mercy. Man, without his mercy, where, you, where would you and I be, Woo! right? That's why we can bless the Lord with joyful heart, Amen. happy heart. You know, we could glorify him because of his mercy. And let's continue to verse 5. Who set us by thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And finally, you know, of course, you know, he says satisfy, you know, your mouth with good things, but your youth is renewed like the eagles. You can bless the Lord because of Lord. All of this, we can do his ministry with zeal, joy, and excitement. I mean, we can bless the Lord that we have opportunity to serve in the ministry with excitement, enthusiasm, with joy. I mean, there are many people out there who can't serve the Lord because they don't have local church or they don't have the ways of doing it. But you and I, especially, you know, wherever you are, whether you're at Dr. Walker's church or anybody of our preachers, you actually have opportunity to praise God, you have opportunity to glorify God, and you have opportunity to be in the ministry. And you could do it like a young buck here, you know. Renew like eagles. Your youth is renewed. Everybody's getting older. Yes. Everybody's getting older, sure. right? And then young ones, you know, one day your prime will be going down, you know, yeah. right after, you know, <laughs> 30s or early 30s or mid-20s. And some of you go down earlier now because, uh, you know, you're, you're so worn out, even when you're a teenager or, you know, because of all this wicked stuff in the public education. But we can't bless the Lord. Why? Because your youth is renewed like the eagles, where you can do Lord's ministry Amen. like that youthful person. Amen. You know, when, you, when we're at the camp, we saw so many people, young ones. Man, we're, you know, Dr. Walker, we're eating at our table. And these young ones, I keep on running right next to the building. You know, they have a little area. And then they're just running. All they're doing is running and running, you know, jumping in. I mean, they have so much energy. Right. You and I can have that. Amen. And Lord gives us that strength, you, like youth, when we're doing his things, right? Yes. His ministry, right? right? Then, you know, you could bless the Lord. I mean, you know what, Lord? My body isn't what it used to be. But, you know, I know you can't give me strength. And... My youth is renewed on a daily basis because I want to serve you. That's why where you see like Dr. Ruckman, I mean, over 90 years old, can't even see out there street preaching. I mean, I mean that's what the Lord said. Youth is renewed, right? I mean, so age is not an excuse. The more you grow older, the more reliant you become on the Lord. Yes, amen. I mean, the more strengths you find in the Lord. Amen. And then more you can bless the Lord, oh my soul. I mean, I mean, you know, Dr. Rockman probably was saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. More and more, and more and more, and more and more. You and I ought to be, you know, that testimony to others. You and I ought to be that faithful servant to, you know, our Lord and Savior. Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's pray. Dear Father, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all your benefits, Lord God. You know, as we finished our event, you know, the world, the devil, and the flesh tries to come and steal it, you know, chill it, and, and just kill it. But we know that we can go on, Lord. As child of God, you know, we can say confidently, bless the Lord, O my soul for all that you have done for us and because of who you are. 
help us to realize that on a daily basis. Our sins are gone once and for all. We can't bless you for that. You know, whatever physical ailments we have, we can't bless you, Lord God. We can't, bless, we can't say bless the Lord because it's going to be gone one day. And for all your mercies, we can say bless the Lord, my soul. And because our strengths renew like youth in this ministry, in the last days where so many souls are lost and on their way to hell, we can be out there and be a witness for you, Lord God. Help us to get closer to you, get right if we haven't, Lord God, and live our life with the testimony of saying, you know, bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless the rest of the day and the upcoming preaching as well, Lord God, and fill the preacher with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we